and welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Tuesday, December 14th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain. Many of the stories right here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com and here are the news stories for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. She's just a regular Alaska Native, she says, trying to be cool even when she's not. Then uh, Natasha Singh, an attorney, issues a blunt announcement that the unsuspecting audience hears she suffers from depression. It's a taboo subject in the native uh, community across a state with a startling high rate of suicides, particularly among uh, Alaska natives. And Natalie, uh, Natasha uh, believes many suicides among her peers are the result of this silence of young people denying their pain or numbing it with alcohol and drugs only to take the only way out they know. Natasha, who also suffers from anxiety, wants to remove the stigma of seeking help in Alaska Native communities. That's why she decided to speak at one of 10 listening sessions being held throughout the nation by federal agencies through February. Federal officials says the sessions aim to explore ways to better address the disproportionate rate of suicide in Alaska Native and American Indian communities, most notably among the young. The latest session was held December 13th in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission wants to give tribes the option of knowing when commercial nuclear waste is being shipped across their reservations. The Commission says it has resurrected a decade-old proposal in an effort to recognize tribal sovereignty. NRC regulations already require that state governors or a designee be informed of certain shipments of spent nuclear fuel and other waste passing through states. If a tribe opts in, it could not release the schedules or itineraries of the shipments, but would be in a position to react more quickly to potential emergencies. The NRC is accepting public comments on the proposal. In an effort to remove Southern Ute Tribal Chairman Matthew Box has failed because not enough people voted in a recall election. The Durango Herald reports that results showed that 308 people voted in the election, but more than half the tribe's 844 registered members had to vote for the election to be binding. Box urged supporters not to vote. Organizers of the recall effort accused Box and his appointed executive officer, Johnny Valdez, of mismanagement. They have called for an audit of the tribe's business dealings and says they'll keep pushing for changes. Box was elected chairman in the year 2008, and his term ends this coming up November. A federal advisory committee has recommended that the University of Pennsylvania return a trove of native artifacts it acquired nearly 90 years ago from a clan of Tinglet people in southeast Alaska. The recommendation last month regarding the collection of more than 40 items, among them headdresses, carved masks, and ceremonial horns, is not binding on Penn's Museum of Archaeology and Anthropology. The museum has offered instead to turn over eight of the objects, allowing the clan to serve as co-curator of the rest. Clan members say that if that is the museum's best offer, they will take the matter to court. The National Park Service has begun a review of the visitor services provided by the uh, Coulter Bay and Grand Teton National Park in Wyoming. One of the goals is, will be to determine how best to manage a collection of American Indian art that's there. The David T. Vernon Collection of American Indian Art currently is housed at the Coulter Bay Visitor Center. The original visitor center at the Coulter Bay was built in 1956. In addition, uh, built to the house... Uh, the art collection opened in 1972. Park officials say the visitor center doesn't meet museum standards for preserving and displaying the art collection. They also say the building doesn't meet current safety and accessibility standards. Grand Teton officials say they are inviting people to share ideas, concerns, and other comments during the review process. A new wood energy project in talk has turned surrounding forests from a fire hazard into renewable fuel. The talk school lit a new wood chip fired boiler for the first time several weeks ago there in Alaska. The 5.5 million BTU steamer, bo uh, steam boiler 
produces the school's heat, saving the school district thousands of dollars in heating fuel and saving forest managers untold costs fighting fires and eliminating waste wood. The school district plans to add a steam turbine generator to the system in May to produce 75% of its electricity use. At the school's new biomass facility, trees and slash are fed into a roto-chipper grinder processed into chips that resemble wood shavings, split into a bin, uh, spit into a bin, and carried by conveyor belt into the boiler, which is 70 feet, 17 feet tall, 6 feet wide, and 12 feet long. Fuel comes from forest thinning projects, scraps, and nearby sawmills. The forest around the school has yielded uh, enough biomass for the first year, according to Alaska Division of Forestry spokeswoman Maggie Rogers. Project leaders hope the system will be used as a model of energy independence for other school districts, cities, and villages and communities. Las Vegas entertainer Wayne Newton will perform at the December 20th opening of the new Mississippi Band of Choctaws Casino in Jones County. The Bogoma Casino will open at 11 a.m. at Bogoma Community, just on the outskirts of Sandersville, Mississippi. Choctaw spokesperson uh, Warren Strain told county supervisors that Newton confirmed his appearance recently to the tribe. The casino will have more than 700 slot machines and a quick-serve eatery. Strain says the casino will have two electronic blackjack tables and one electronic roulette table. Strain says the Choctaw Police Department will also have a substation located in the new casino, and he said there will be armed officers in place for the safety of its customers. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank you all for joining with us. Come back again sooner.